Well, good evening and welcome, and we're so glad that you've joined us this evening for another edition of the ASI Hour. We're very excited that Joy Kaufman has joined us for our presentation this evening, and we're glad that each one of you have joined us as well. And uh, we're just excited about what Joy is going to share with us today as we spend the next hour together. Uh, just want to let you know, uh, we are joining uh, together here on the Demio platform this evening. Uh, it's a little different than maybe Zoom or some of the other things that you're used to. So if you haven't joined us before, I just want to let you know how this works. So as Joy shares, we'll be viewing a PowerPoint throughout, uh, but we also have the opportunity to have interaction throughout this. Uh, you'll notice on the right-hand side of your, your Demio platform, there's a chat, uh, and there will be uh, you know the opportunity for you to just tell us where you're joining us from, type in questions or comments as we go through the presentation here. So I'd like to just welcome you to, you know, feel free to let us know where you're joining us from. We'll have a poll question here shortly that you'll also get to participate in. And that's another way that you can interact with us this evening is through the, the poll questions and your responses uh, to the questions that Joy will be sharing with us this evening. Uh, let's go ahead and just launch a poll here, just finding out where everybody's joining us from this evening. And so I'm just going to launch that poll and feel free to just weigh in and, and let us know where you're joining us from. And uh, I'm joining you here from Canada, Alberta, Canada this evening. Joy, where are you joining us from? Illinois. So okay. not too far from Chicago, but in a little tiny town. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. So we have North America represented here. I see there's some joining from Central America. Welcome and also from Africa, and uh, we're all glad to see each one of you joining us here, wherever you're joining us from. And uh, just feel free as well to let us know specifically where you're joining from in the chat. I see we've got a wide range of, of places here throughout North America, London, Hawaii. Wow, Hawaii is a lot warmer than it is here, minus 20 Celsius in Alberta tonight. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> So I'd like to just let everybody know next week, uh, Rodney Bowes will be sharing with us in the evangelism track about some exciting uh, testimonies actually and, and opportunities uh, for evangelism. We're going to have someone uh, named Patty Guthrie who's sharing uh, just very practical tips that they've uh, found to be very effective during this time in their local church and the community. And so we're looking forward to hearing about those practical tips and I'm sure that we'll each be blessed uh, hearing that testimony as well. Uh, so, Joy, I'd like to just briefly introduce you uh, this evening, and I'm sure uh, you'll be sharing a little more with us uh, about yourself as we go through the presentation. But Joy is joining us here as the founder and executive director of Farm Stew. Um, it's been really interesting. I had the opportunity to get to know Joy a little better here at the ASI virtual convention. Uh, we were kind of sitting uh, beside each other there in the virtual uh, um presentations and, and things and so it was great to learn more about Farm Stew uh, during our time there. Joy is also the president of the Lake Union ASI chapter and so if this wasn't enough she's also the wife and mother of two children uh, as well and so we're just glad that you could take the time out to share with us this evening Joy. Thank and, you so uh, much for having me. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so well, just before we get started Started here, uh, let's start with prayer and ask God to just guide our time together as Joy shares with us. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful that we have this opportunity to come together each week and we're grateful for the just the different um, people that have been able to share and we're just thankful that Joy can share with us this evening about what Farm Stew is doing and how that can apply to us, how that can be something that um, not only is a blessing to us as we listen to the presentation, but also just perhaps inspire us. And so I pray that um, our time together would be attended by your presence uh, wherever we're joining from around the world. And we thank you again for this opportunity in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, Joy, um, let's just start off here with a question. Uh, how can Farm Stew, uh, we've been going through some difficult times here around this the world. I think everybody uh, probably that's joining us this evening has been impacted in some way or another. How can Farm Stew help people like me and those listening tonight during these difficult times? That is exactly why I'm here tonight, Curtis. So thank you for that question. First, I just want to invite people real quickly to put one thing on their calendars. 
um, now that everything's virtual, anybody can go anywhere, right? So um, I just wanted to let people know that the ASI Lake Union is going to have our spring virtual convention coming together April 15th and 16th. So mark your calendar for that and there'll be more information coming soon. So just jumping then back to your question, Curtis, uh, how can farms do help people like you or all of those that are listening here tonight? I, if you've been around ASI for a while, we've been blessed, Farms to Do and myself and some of our board members have been blessed to share some of what we're doing in Africa. And I'll be sharing some of that later on this evening, but I wanted to start with the focus on you because we've learned this year that all of us need our health and well-being protected. And so we actually decided to take this acronym Farm Stew, which you may be familiar with, farming, attitude, rest and meals, sanitation, temperance, enterprise and water, and we wanted to apply it to ourselves. So we first wanna just start with what is this, these eight letters? We call it the recipe for abundant life. And we're inspired by Jesus who said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So the goal is not just for a few people, not just for those who live in Loma Linda and you know, get to go biking every Sabbath afternoon <laughs> um, or, or, you know, it's not just for a select group of people, it's for all people to have abundant life. And that's what Farmster is motivated by. And so we started with the idea for gardening or farming as being the basis for our health message. So many of you know about the health message, but rarely does it start with farming, except for with farm stew. And right now in the context of COVID, uh, you might be in a place like Curtis where it's negative 20, I hope not. <laughs> But um, you might be a place like me where, you know, there's been snow on the ground for a month or more. But right now we can already start thinking about gardening because gardening gets us outdoors. It gets us our fresh air, exercise and sunshine. And I tell you, it's not just us as Adventists thinking about gardening. The whole world is thinking about gardening right now. And if you want to get seeds for a vegetable garden this year, you better do it quick. So that's a quick plug for going and starting to think about how you can incorporate gardening into your life. That doesn't mean you have to be a market farmer or live on what you grow. Believe me, most of us would start pretty quickly if we were in that circumstance. But what it does mean is you can benefit from getting those things you need. One of them is the vitamin D. And if you've been doing, following the COVID research, vitamin D is a major factor in whether people get COVID really bad or whether it's just kind of like cold fluish thing that they get over pretty quickly. So getting that, you know, sun contact with your skin. And by the way, I'm a, a public health nutritionist. So you'll hear me talking a fair bit about things like vitamins. So uh, the other thing I do want to say is Farms 2 has some resources for gardening. But I, we also have some friends, ASI members, uh, borntogrow.net. It's the Dice Singers are involved in that, and they have a whole online gardening university. So we, we like to plug our friends and our fellow ASI members and businesses, too. So why would we garden? Um, I, I think we, again, everything in Farms do, we go back to scripture. And when we look at the children of Israel and the time that they were really struggling most, it was uh, when they were in exile, and they were told through the prophet Jeremiah, by God, build houses and dwell in them, plant gardens and eat their fruit. And so we feel like we're just telling people the same thing. You know, we're going to be in for some rough times ahead, but let's hunker down. Let's let's do what we can and, and you know, pray for the, the peace of our nations, but knowing that times are going to get hard and that this would be a good idea. Curtis, I did want to mention one thing. We do have a handout. And if Absolutely. you can direct people to the handout, I'm just thinking, I'm starting to go through a handout that I would really like you to print out and put on your refrigerator because a lot of the content I'm going to share, I'm going to go through rather quickly. And I really think this is going to help you. And it's also something you can share uplifting with your neighbors. We've had uh, people that we sent them to say, hey, I made copies and shared them. So you can get them here. If you don't get them tonight, you can also always get them on our website, just waiting about 10 seconds, and it's a free download on our website. So I'm seeing 31 of you have clicked already, so keep clicking. <laughs> so, okay, we'll go back to the wellness guide. Why do we want to garden? It's actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm into exercise. I believe it's important. But did you know that gardening gives you as much benefit as 
various forms of exercise. It actually is one of the most positive emotion um, generating activities you can get. It compares to you know biking and walking, which are great things too, but um, sometimes you can't do it when it's negative 20, right, Chris? <laughs> That's so, right. Yeah, so um, it's really, really important to get out there. And one other thing that's exciting about it is that vegetable gardeners have a higher emotional well-being than ornamental gardens. So you flowers are great, but grow your vegetables if you want to be really happy. And the other thing that's kind of neat about it is that um, oftentimes, you know, things that make people feel really good, they cost a lot of money. But gardening, it doesn't. You can get out there and it actually makes people statistically significantly uh, poorer people feel better when they're gardening even than wealthier people. And women feel better when they're gardening even than men, but it benefits everyone. And then key takeaways, it's, it's household gardening is associated with high emotional well-being. It's associated with higher even than ornamental gardening, and it's really, really beneficial for women and even lower income. So starting a community garden in your neighborhood, that might be one of the best ways you could friendship, evangelize, and get your own benefits as well. Do you have to have a big piece of land? No. This is the daughter of our board chair, Jacqueline Tierney, and she just lives in a small apartment, and she just turned her every square inch into a garden. So you don't have to be professional. You don't have to have a big area of land. You can just grow food wherever you can, even in a windowsill. Uh, also, another place to go and learn, I'll be sharing later, we have our Farm Stew curriculum is available free online, and it is at a downloadable materials also that you can take the course and learn a lot of things like what we teach in other countries. So that's on our website. You just click on the recipe and it'll take you to the e-learning course. So again, grounded in scripture, why garden? This is where we started. You know, the Lord planted the garden in Eden and then you go to Revelation, we're gonna be back in the garden eating from the tree <laughs> with the 12 fruits and the leaves will be for the healing of the nations. So why wait and not start now? So our attitude. Um, our attitude is so important. And actually, people don't realize the immune system, it develops in the bones. And, and we know a few scriptures. Like I said, I'm not going to read the whole guide. You have it now. 45 of you have downloaded. Good job. You're getting those numbers up. But let's just remember, a merry heart does good like medicine but a broken spirit dries the bones. So we know that, you know, if our bones are where our immune system is being produced, if we are, you know, broken in our spirit, our immune system is not gonna function well. There's a lot of research that proves these things. And how are we gonna do that? You know, there's a lot of things going on in this world that could, you know, dry our spirit or break, break our spirit. But I always like to say, you know, if you think about fishermen, you know, you cast your cares, upon him it never says to reel it back in you know <laughs> you're supposed to cast it out far far deep into the water but don't reel your cares back in just leave it at the foot of the cross and you'll be a lot better off rest you know uh your mom told you go to bed i'm telling you go to bed <laughs> um i he said I'm, I'm actually the mother of two teenage girls and you know we are losing so much sleep because everybody's sitting at night on their phones, you know, or bringing their electronics into their bedroom. That is destroying our immune system. Ellen White said that hours before midnight are twice as effective as after midnight. Now we have the science to prove it. You know, there's a lot of things she said that were so ahead of her time, but we have the science to prove it now. So get your sleep and go to bed early and take those electronics out of your room. I won't say more because I'm not your mother, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, you know, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are labor, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I just want to say with this, you know, there's a lot of people suffering from insomnia, anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. I've, I've been there. Seven years ago, I was going through a really, really hard depression, insomnia, anxiety, the whole nine yards. It was terrible. I decided to try the Adventist experiment on myself, <laughs> and that included cutting out caffeine, no alcohol. I wasn't an Adventist at the time. Um, I converted five years ago, but I, I cut out those things and I started doing Bible study. I have to say, I still struggle sometimes doing it every single morning, but I keep recommitting myself to the Sabbath school study guide, which by the way, this morning was about comforting. We all need comfort. It was, it spoke to my spirit. Um, 
and really, you know, just trying to do the things that we know, if you've been hanging around with Adventists, we know what to do. Really commit yourself to that. And I tell you, God just took me like a right out of the ashes into his marvelous light. So I know he can do it for you too. So rest, meals. Okay. We're getting into the whole food plant-based diet. Now oh. I was a vegetarian and a nutritionist long before I was an Adventist. I studied you guys. Um, there was clinical research in the literature all the way from the 80s saying that the Adventist diet was making you live longer, be healthier, you know, avoid chronic disease. But then I came into the church and I realized a lot of you don't follow it. <laughs> Why not? I know of a couple where she is very, very good about um, really doing the, the diet and the health message. He is not. They both got COVID. He was in the hospital for eight days and really it almost took him. She had a cold and sniffles. Now, I know that's not pure research because that's just an anecdotal evidence, but it spoke to me and and he, I'm not naming who this he is, um, he was just saying the other night in our Bible study group, I just wanna really commit to the health message and to the diet. He's like, I know I have a sweet tooth, I know I have this. Sugar depresses the immune system like almost nothing else. We really, really gotta avoid it at this point. If you want to know what to eat that's going to keep you healthy, again, our Farms Do Teachables, uh, it's, Teachables is the platform, but it's our e-learning course. There's a lot of information out there. We designed it for people living in villages in Africa, but it's actually our bodies, we're all the same. Our blood is all red. We're all the same. So this food guide that you see here with the fresh fruits and vegetables being the rainbow of color on your plate, that's what we're trying to teach. And then also, I'll talk more about water in a moment, but you can't have your body function without a foundation of water. Okay, sanitation. Um, really, when we first got started with this whole COVID thing, everybody was into washing hands, washing hands, washing hands. Hardly anybody's talking about it anymore, but literally it is the most important defense for spreading disease. And so one thing that actually just irks me <laughs> is now you push a little, um, you know, squirty thing and the foam comes out but guess what the point of washing your hands is that abrasion and in the good old days when you grabbed a bar of soap you had to scrub your hands and you made the bubbles the bubbles showed that you actually had done a good job of scrubbing now you just push the button the bubbles go on your hand and then you rinse your hands that's not hand washing folks um, we need to think about being like surgeons, you know, how you see them when they in the movie or whatever, and they're just really, really scrubbing their hands. The other thing is, and I might get some negative comments here, but I'm ready for you, um, the masks. I know, especially we as Americans, we feel like it's our right to do whatever we want. Um, but I just want to say, for the least of these, my brethren, what can we do for them? So for me personally, when this thing started, I am the health ministries coordinator for my church and a deaconess. And I looked at the oldest member in our congregation. His name was Roy. I said, you know what, y'all, I don't want to kill Roy. So I'm going to wear a mask whether I want to or not. And um, sadly, Roy actually did die, but not of COVID. He died of a heart condition. And I'm just thankful it wasn't me that put him in his grave. And just saying, <laughs> I might get negative comments, but I really feel like it's something we can do for, for others. It's not perfect, but it's better than the alternative. Anybody can wash their hands, even little girls like this one in Uganda who's using a tippy tap, which is one of the hallmarks of farm stew training, teaching people that how to get that running water. And you know, who came up with the idea of running water? The Bible, Leviticus. You know, God knew about germs long before we knew about microscopes. So he knew what to do. And then we're rounding out here. We're at the T for temperance. Um, folks, this is the time to be careful with what we put into our bodies. Without having our lungs be able to function properly, if you get COVID, it's going to be a problem. And, you know, this vaccine is not a panacea, and it's not going to get out to everybody anytime quick. We've got to take care of ourselves, and the Bible tells us how. He says to honor God with our bodies. So we got to be careful with alcohol. You know, you don't hear these statistics. 90,000 people in the U.S. die every single year from alcohol-related illnesses. I don't know what it is in your country where you're watching, but that's ridiculous. You never hear about it because the government makes money off of it. So 
we got to be really careful. Alcohol, you never know who is going to, from that very first drink, end up being addicted. And back when I used to drink, I later found out that I was aiding and abetting some people that I later found out were alcoholics. And I felt terrible once I realized that I was, I was contributing to their very chronic, very, very horrible condition. And so even if you don't think you have a problem with alcohol, you don't know who you are harming by just a casual drink. So I know most of us Adventists, we got this one in line, but some of us might be sliding on this one because a lot of you know churches are, are not even commenting on this. I'm so glad that we do. And again, we know why. You know, we, we need to honor God with our body. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You didn't bring anything into the temple that had a blemish, a spot, nothing. So why would we take in a toxic substance that we're just killing our livers slowly, trying to process that poison out of our bodies? Don't want to do it. The E for enterprise. I'm talking to the right crowd here. You guys, um, ASI is known for running businesses and launching businesses. And so you all know it's hard to run a business, especially right now. But the goal for the enterprise should not become to be rich, but to be rich in good deeds. And to know that if you are employing anybody, you are a blessing and you're doing the work of the Lord. And I just want to commend, especially the businesses that are involved in ASI, because you're not only employing people, but you're also blessing ministries like Farm Stew and the many other wonderful ministries. And we can't do it without you guys. So I just want to encourage you, if you don't have a business or don't have an entrepreneurial mind, start thinking about it or start cultivating it in your children to think about what they can get out and share. And then I'm rounding out to the last one, water. We know to drink water, but especially in the colder months, sometimes it's hard to force ourselves to do it because we don't feel thirsty. Two to three liters a day we should be drinking. And okay, warning, this might be gross. Close your eyes if you don't like body fluids. If your urine is darker than that color, you are not drinking enough water. And again, your poor little kidneys are screaming. Okay, so every now and then you might want to just look down and check it out. And you really, really need to be making sure right now, all the water is how you wash. You know, you take a shower in water. You never pour Coca-Cola over your head to get clean or coffee or anything else. So you wash your outside with water. You want to wash your inside with water. And that's what we teach people all over the world. But now it's coming home to you. And then lastly, with that water, we can also really activate your immune system with the alternating hot and cold showers. Again, that's an idea that, you know, Sister White was given 150 years ago. People probably thought she was totally bizarre. Now there's all this research to prove it. And so I even gave this talk at a Rotary meeting a few months ago, and I saw a, a fellow Rotarian a few weeks later, and he's like, I had my first good night's sleep ever, <laughs> or like in years because I did that at night before I went to bed. And I was like, you know what, that's just great. And again, it's a way of friendship evangelizing. So that is our wellness guide. If you are intrigued by what you downloaded, 52 of you have downloaded it so far. And I don't know, I think there's like 37% of the audience is sleeping. So download it if you can. But if you want more information, there's like a 10 page guide that goes with it, or I don't know how many pages, but something like that with 10 points. So. That was a quick wrap up of our wellness guide, Curtis. I'm going to hand it back to you for the next question. Right. Well, thank you, Joy. Uh, if, if anybody's just wondering, how am I supposed to get this handout? If you've joined us here since we um, shared that handout, uh, on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see there's the chat, the polls, and handouts. Click on the handouts there, and you can download that wellness guide. And uh, I know it'll be a blessing to each one of you. And, Joy, that's, that's so practical. Thank you for sharing each one of those. And uh, also, you know, feel free to check out the Farm Stew website as well. And I'm sure there's uh, more resources there that um, Joy's mentioned in terms of teaching and so on. And so, Joy, I'm just wondering, could you tell us a little bit about uh, what Farm Stew is doing to help our global church and how, how that's all working? Okay, wonderful. So hopefully you all are feeling good and energized. And so now we're ready to, you know, think about others. And so... I want to share quickly first a poll question, and uh, I think Curtis will pull it up, yep. but I'll read it. It says, what percentage of the 21 million members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church live in sub-Saharan Africa? So I'm curious if you can go ahead and put your answers there in the chat. 
All right, boy, I don't know, Joy, if I, if I know which one to answer here. This is a good question here. I see we have a lot of people uh, kind of thinking it's in that 20 to 40% range. Yeah, and I'm seeing that. It looks like maybe the 30 to 40 is weighing a little, a little heavier. Please feel free to weigh in on the polls there. Just enter your, your response and a way to interact with your, your best guess, I, I suppose, on this. Well, I will give you one hint um, for those that haven't answered yet. They have a between a 7 and 8% growth rate. So, Curtis, how would you feel if your business had a 7 to 8% annual growth rate? <laughs> yeah, well, that would be decent. Yeah, they're, they're doing a great job. Okay, so the answer is actually 42%. So those 10 people got that right. And so I just want to show you here, here's a map, a global map with our divisions. So it's those three divisions, the um, green, orange, and light green one in Africa that has 42% of our global membership. So if we want to think about our global church, I'm encouraging us to spend a little bit of time tonight thinking about people in sub-Saharan Africa. And here's just a few of them. Um, these are some of our farms do teams in Green is the Uganda and the yellow are uh, South Sudan and some of the others in plain clothes are, they were at that time volunteers. Some of them have been hired now as trainers. And you know, these also are our church members out in the rural villages. Many of our churches are just thatch huts and um, you know, even like a tarp on the top that just pops up every Sabbath. So our church members are all over the world and our, and you know, one thing I just wanna say is these numbers don't even count children. So I would guess that it's an even higher percentage, maybe upwards to 50%, because, um, you know, in many countries, like, for example, Uganda, they're still having six or so kids each, and, you know, Canada and North America, where <laughs> that number is quite a bit lower. So, okay, so my next question, oh, you know what, I'm going to save this question until I educate you a little bit more. So one of the things we talked about earlier is Loma Linda, you know, the blue zones, these Adventists that get 90 years of life, practically seven to eight more than the um, average American population. So this um, chart shows lifespan on the uh, vertical axis and income on the horizontal. And I just want to show something real quick. Um, this is looking at different countries. So now you can see the guide, the, um, the Americas are in green and you know Asia in pink, I guess it is, Europe in yellow and Africa in blue. So you can kind of see a trend here, and I want to show the next slide that'll really show the trend in a pronounced way. Here is Africa. So you can see that the, the um, life expectancy of an African is generally hovering around 60 years, and we know as Adventists, we're closer up there to 90 years. So it's, there's a huge difference in terms of this abundant living, right, that Jesus wants for all of us between our brothers and sisters living there. And that is before COVID. And this is a map that shows predicted COVID-related food insecurity in 2021. So we know a lot of economies have been decimated, and uh, but really food insecurity is going to hit what continent the most, Curtis? <laughs> oh, it looks like Africa, wow. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Um, there's some of the places where we're working where it's just, really horrifying and I just want to bring um I just want to bring what does that mean um so I have my little baby here and this little baby is about the size of a preemie okay it's it probably if it was in in real flesh it would probably weigh about four or five pounds which would be a tiny tiny little baby and um we took some measurements and it, this is called a mid upper arm circumference and I will show it to you it's kind of like doctors have a stethoscope but Public health nutritionists like me, they we use something like this. It's called the mid-upper arm circumference. And you can see there's a green area, yellow, and red, right? So what we do is we find the midpoint in the arm of a, a child from six months to five years old. And so you see this child is tiny, tiny, tiny. So this isn't even, this is on the tiniest um, end of the spectrum from six months to five years. And I put the little tape through and then I'm going to pull it around this little baby's arm and show that if this baby is healthy, it would be green. But this little baby is in the yellow zone. Yeah. So I want to show, I mean, this, this little baby is tiny, 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 right? 
Well, in one of our churches uh, where we're working, we haven't started working. We did a, a pilot outreach in October in, in South Sudan in an area called Wow. And we had the, the pastor and the volunteers there do a survey of all of their children. They found 40 children in one Seventh-day Adventist church in the yellow or red zone. And so these are like three, four, and five-year-olds that have arms that are as tiny or tinier than this little tiny, tiny, tiny baby doll. So we're talking, you know, a lot of children in this one church that are really starving. So these are Adventists. These are church members' children that are literally starving. And I bring that up because that's not abundant life, right? right. And that's the type of reason um, why I really started Farm Stew and why I feel like God wants each and every one of you to be involved in Farm Stew too. Because the exciting thing is that Farm Stew, this recipe of abundant life, it can make a difference. We had a, a, another study conducted in an area where Farm Stew has been working for 18 months. And in that area, we started where 59% of the children were in the yellow or red zone. And we were able to move it so that there was only 3% of the children after a year and a half of farms to intensive training. I mean, that means trainers were in their village every week. We were bringing seeds. We were bringing pads to the girls, doing a lot of different things. But to move it so that 97% of the kids were in the green zone, whereas before, 59% were in this area. So. This recipe, I've never been more confident that it can make a huge difference in people's lives. And so that's what I'm excited about sharing because it, it works. Um, I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. So, yes, it looks terrible. But the great thing is we have 9 million members in the same area that can make a difference. And if we can equip and empower and mobilize these members to go out and share this recipe, we can avert this disaster that's coming. And people might ask, you know, how do you help people? You know, people have been trying to do missions in Africa forever and it's just getting worse. Why, why bother, right? You might be thinking that. And, and in all honesty, that's a fair question to ask. But, you know, Sister White has a book called Welfare Ministry. It's a compilation book. It's on the, you know, Ellen White app that anybody can listen to. I'd really encourage you. She has a whole chapter about helping the poor help themselves. And this is just one quote in it. She says, you may teach the poor, sorry, you may give to the poor and injure them because you teach them to be dependent. Instead, teach them to support themselves. This will be true help. The needy must be placed in positions where they can help themselves. And that is really the focus of Farm Stew. And you can see the picture here. This was of a refugee home. And Curtis, any idea what they're growing there in that garden? I, I couldn't guess, Joy. I don't know. <laughs> These are one of Farm Stew's most famous crops, and it is soybeans. Okay. And, so uh, we don't soy grow that in Canada, so I, I just not familiar with it. Oh, yeah. You guys are up in there for canola country, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm surrounded by soybeans here in Illinois. But um, the exciting thing about growing soy and other nutrient-dense crops is that we actually, in our hands-on cooking classes, teach people how to use them. And they call the soybean the green cow because they can make milk with it. And actually, this was the home of one of the trainers that we trained. And now we actually are uh, just a participant in the class. But we actually hired this, this woman, Margaret, because she just implemented everything that we taught. And she's a church member now out teaching others about this message of Farm Stew. So I just want to mention briefly the five freedom priorities. So uh, I won't go into great detail on any of these, but we've we've honed in now on what do we really want to do? How can we really make this difference? And what's really going to make those kids nourished and those communities thrive? And so there's five freedoms. Uh, freedom from dependency. So that quote just really touched on it. We really want to make sure that people can grow their food and they're not dependent. They're not waiting on handouts from others. And then we have the, um, and, and I just want to show a picture of the gardens that can be grown there. You know, um, it can be a beautiful, powerful force. Uh, 
The second freedom is freedom from shame. So we make uh, a big effort to help girls with their menstrual hygiene. And that's because girls actually drop out of school. And as the mother of two teens, I can't imagine if their education stopped right when their menstrual cycle started. But that's what happens to millions of girls around the world. And we can stop that and help them be much more healthy for the future and then be able to have healthier children in the future and continue to learn about God and, and love, love their neighbors. So uh, freedom from dependency, freedom from shame, and freedom from disease and drudgery. So uh, a lot of people are walking far distances to get water that's not even clean and makes them sick. So that's a life of drudgery and it leads to disease. And by putting in wells, which we were able to either uh, drill or repair 31 water projects last year, our goal was 50, so COVID slowed us down a little bit, but we're not going to let it get the best of us. So our goal is 50 wells again this year. And people generously have given to help to make that possible. Uh, so those are the free, three freedoms from, and then there's two freedoms to do something. So first is the freedom to share. So it's sharing our curriculum freely, translating it into already Spanish, um, we're looking for Arabic, Swahili is our next two goals, and then many other languages. But for example, up in South Sudan, I was on the phone with our executive director there talking about how we're going to reach these kids in, wow, South Sudan, and we need to get everything translated into Arabic as quickly as possible. The last freedom is the freedom to grow. So we're really excited about partnerships, and that's one reason I'm excited to talk to ASI tonight, because We've already partnered with a few other ASI ministries and church ministries. For example, the Malawi Adventist University is going to start teaching our curriculum to their students and then having hands-on practical demo gardens there at the university and then going out from there into the community. So um, we also ended up getting to go to Cuba a year and a half ago with the World Youth Group, another ASI ministry, and now we've hired uh, some of their Bible workers and are partnering with them to get the word out and seeds out to the Cuban people during this time of crisis as well. So those are the five freedoms. And I just wanted to cover those. I showed you freedom from dependency. And I just wanna share a little bit about the, how do we teach farming? Because you might be, be curious, like what, what would make somebody suddenly want to farm? And uh, this is from the start of our curriculum. It's farming a labor of love. And just really making sure that people know that God put us in the garden. He told us to garden. It's not an undignified thing. It's something that you can love. And, and also just that the Bible has wisdom about it. Uh, he says in the, his word, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. So even it's amazing how many of our participants say, I didn't ever used to have rows and clearly delineated paths. And now I do. And that makes a huge difference. The plants need exercise, uh, fresh air and sunshine <laughs> to grow. So, and then we use like Bible texts like this one, the sower and the soils to actually teach agricultural. So Curtis, I'm putting you on the spot. If you were teaching agriculture using this parable, what would you, what would you tell people? What could you glean? Well, I would say that we need to be careful what uh, type of soil we plant in, I suppose. Yes. And what could you do to increase the productivity of your crops? Well, I'm guessing proper cultivation and proper planting techniques. Okay. And I like to bring people, that's very good, Curtis. Um, you know, the John 10.10, 10, which is our th theme verse, there's a first half of that theme verse that I don't quote quite as often, but it's about the thief that comes to do what? to plant uh, weeds among the seeds. Yeah, good seeds. <laughs> exactly. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And so we talk about the weeds, not letting the weeds take over your garden because they're just going to destroy your crop. So you can see how you can use these lessons. They're, they're spiritual, yes, but Jesus made them agricultural first. And sometimes mm -hmm. we miss the point there. So anyway, we just go ahead and we teach a lot of different fun things like just how to measure out a garden bed. And, you know, these are people with don't have tape measures. So any imagination of how we how we get the right measurements? Looks like we're using a stick there of some yes. sort. To kind of, yeah. 
And the stick was measured very cleverly by figuring out this, that your hands, when you have them together like this, it equals 30 centimeters, and this is 10 centimeters. And I encourage everybody, go check it out and see if your, your hand is the same. But it's kind of like in Bible times, you know, there was cer certain measurements that was like the elbow to the nail or something. I don't know all those measurements, but it's actually pretty amazing how precise you can be. So, okay, we're jumping into our next poll. Once you're growing all these vegetables, uh, you get to eat them, right? So here's our next poll question. And Curtis will pull that up. It says, how many naturally occurring bright colors did you eat from fruits or vegetables in the last 24 hours? Let's All be right. honest here. Nope. This yeah. is an, nope. an anonymous <laughs> poll, so don't don't feel like you're you're going to be uh, you know in trouble here. We're just asking for an honest reflection here of of this, and encourage as many as possible to just put your answer in the the poll there. Okay. How are we looking, Joy? Is this is this a well, you know a good number? We've got three to four. Is kind of looks like the majority. Yeah, that, that's not bad, and it's probably better than most people, but it's, I hate to say it, not good enough, <laughs> especially right now in the context of COVID. We want to really be loading up on as many colors, the dark, naturally occurring colors that we possibly can, and I like to say, you know, again, there's the thief, right? So we're not talking about Skittles and M&Ms, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have that type of candy up there, but... <laughs> there are these rainbow candies and you think about there's so many junk foods that they just pour all these artificial colors in all those things cost money you know they're not cheap those color chemicals and most of them are toxic but the bible says god says you know eat that which is pleasing to the eye and he knows that we're attracted to color and <clears throat> But that's because he wants us to have an abundant life. He wants us to thrive. And so these naturally occurring colors, the darker, the better. And so I want to show you what I would like your plates to look like. Um, these are in some of the classes. And it's really interesting because we're talking about rural people. They don't actually have probably money for art, um, but they they make art in these classes. And it's so fun. And um, one mm -hmm. of our famous Adventist doctors, he is encouraging people to have nine servings of deep colored nutrient rich foods during this COVID time, especially. They provide antioxidants and micronutrients that are needed for a robust immune system. And they deliver about 1500 milligrams of vitamin C, which is a super immune fighter. And then also getting the D and zinc you try, can get them from your foods, but I would really encourage you if you're in a northern climate and there's snow on the ground or it's cold, go ahead and take some vitamin D to supplement because honestly, you really, really need that. So we are really wanting you to get your fruits and vegetables and it's expensive. So that takes us back to gardening. As soon as you can possibly get some things growing in the ground, go for it. We really want to encourage you. And I'm not going to go into the details of some of these because I do want to save time for um, questions and answers and everything. And if you have questions or comments, go ahead and please put them in the chat. But um, I want to see next time, if I get the chance again, I want to see more of us eating a rainbow of diet. And this is a garden plan that, again, is in our training curriculum. It looks complicated, but it's really not. Once you read the lesson, you can plan out your whole garden and you can do it in raised beds or just on the soil. and really be able to rotate your crops and get the crops you need for good diets and have what we call a farm stew certified home where this is a couple, actually a church elder and his wife and then in green is one of our trainers, uh, Daniel. And here they're growing orange flesh sweet potatoes, which I don't know wow. if you realize, but the orange color in the potato and also the leaves are great sources of vitamin A. And vitamin A is also very immune boosting. And then on the side here with the mulch, they have a, a high iron bean. So about half the kids in Africa are severely anemic, meaning they're not getting properly oxygenated blood. And it's hard to think when you're not getting enough oxygen. And especially also in COVID, you want to think about natural sources of iron. So red beans are a great, great place to start. So these are some more farms to certified homes and I'm going to jump to the next poll question. 
just to help us have an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> Where did you get the water that you drank or used for cooking today? <laughs> well, I'm going to take a wild guess that we're going to see number one being the, probably the most popular answer, but let's see if anybody else responds with any of the other options. Wow. Hmm. But I'm guessing this is all too common, the other answers in some parts of the world. Yeah, exactly. I did notice there was one person from Africa signing in. I don't know if they're the ones that the pump. Okay, and we got somebody walking 30 minutes. That is very common in many parts of the world. And sadly, the last answer from a open, unclean water source. Um, it's, it is just phenomenal how many children are dying. And I just want to say, you know, that life expectancy that we looked at earlier, it's not because all the 60-year-olds in Africa are just dropping dead. No, there's older people in Africa. It's that those numbers are brought down severely by childhood deaths and often the, the unclean water sources is a real reason for those childhood deaths. And we can avoid that with good clean water. And that's one of our one of our goals for Farm Stew. So we saw this little girl before fighting COVID with her hand washing and uh, there's water in here. She pushes it down with her foot and the water comes out and she has her little soap on a bar here and uh, she's, a precious little one. Okay, here's the quiz. Make sure everybody was listening. Which of the following is not an ingredient in the recipe for abundant life? And uh, this was a, a trick question. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> All right. The answers are coming in. So I'll just tell a little story while I was working on this. I, the, the acronym Farm Stew came to me when I was actually on the trampoline one Sabbath afternoon. And it was actually before I even converted, but I was very familiar with Adventist teaching and had tried the Adventist health experiment on myself and it was working. So I was reading everything I could get my hands on about what did we teach about health. And this idea of Farm Stew came to me. I was working for the local health department, working with uh, farmers trying to promote fresh fruits and vegetables in my own rural food desert county where there's not enough fresh fruits and vegetables. And the idea came to me, but I couldn't figure out the letter E. The letter E was um, confusing to me because, you know, we just talked about where people get their water. And if you're having to walk, um, you know, like an hour a day to go get your water, you probably don't need to be told to go get fresh air, exercise, or sunshine, right? So the right answer, which is not an ingredient in the Farm Stew recipe, is exercise because this message is designed for people that are naturally getting plenty of exercise. So that was the right answer was exercise. Um, but for those of us that actually get the water from the faucet, I will say sitting is the new smoking. And I know even myself as I'm getting older and leading this organization and spend way too much time on the computer, um, it can really wear on you. So we need to exercise, but it's not in the recipe. So that again is the recipe of Farm Stew. And that again is also our website. I want to encourage people to check it out. And I'll just start to wrap up here by saying, if you had a recipe, this is the last poll question, and that could change people's lives and would introduce them to Jesus, would you feel compelled to share it? So, yay, <laughs> the right answer is flooding in. So that was a setup question, by the way. It wasn't a trick question, but kind of a setup. So thank you all for saying that, that you're willing to share it. So I just want to conclude by saying how you can share it. So here's Jonah, one of our agronomists, which means an agricultural expert. He's um, in Uganda, and he works for Farms to Uganda. And you can see this is at a church event, some little pathfinders. People were so excited about eating the soy scrambled eggs, which is just tofu that they made at the cooking class. People are very excited. Churches are asking us to go and share this recipe. So you can share it by going and taking our e-learning course, which we really encourage you to check out. Um, we're going to actually be launching a new, much more comprehensive curriculum here, hopefully next week. And that will be what is used at the university to teach 
And we're also opening to, open to um, talking to some other universities, Adventist universities, where they could teach it as well in a public health course or, or um, agriculture course, something. We're quite open to that. Um, also, just want to encourage you to share the recipe by sharing the website or uh, joining us on Facebook or Instagram. I don't do too much on Instagram, but um, we get <laughs> little posts up there once in a while. So Facebook is where we're a little bit more active. And also on our website, you can um, sign up to get a free e-learning guide and just put in your information right there and we'd love to be in touch. So we wanna just thank you for ASI. You know, you've already equipped these as a team of our trainers and they're armed and not dangerous. They have, they're armed with uh, vegetable seeds and ready to take the message out to the world. And uh, we just want to thank ASI for partnering with us to make it possible to, to share this recipe and praise God for all the things he's doing. Well, well, thank you, Joy, for, for sharing, not only uh, challenging us in how we can be living more healthy, uh, the, the, those practical tips uh, that pretty much I think any one of us can can apply to our lives, but also uh, how God is using farm stew around the world. And I'm just very uh, impressed and thankful for the work that, that farm stew is doing. And uh, I'm sure if anybody has any more questions, as Joy has shared, um, she'd be happy to answer them uh, by email. We're gonna, we have just a few minutes here to take a couple of questions here. Um, I'm just going to go from the, the bottom up, and I apologize, we may not have time to get to every question here, but uh, Barbara's asking, how do you amend the soil before growing produce, or prepare the soil, I suppose? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, we do a lot with teaching people how to use compost, and sadly, in a lot of these countries, they're still burning, like the, the plant matter that's kind of sort of what they think as waste product. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot with teaching compost, and then we also do a lot with teaching mulch. And um, and then, yeah, both of those things help a lot. There are places where they need more than that. Um, and, you know, if they're able to afford a little bit of help, but we do really promote organic agriculture. Mm -hmm. and it's affordable and it's effective and it's sustainable in the long term. Excellent. Uh, Abigail's asking, what do you do in places, uh, just uh, move my screen here, uh, in places where there's not enough rain and water to do farming? So rain and water is a big challenge, but I will say compost holds 10 times the amount of moisture per particle than regular soil. So compost can be an incredible water retention and then mulch. And then a lot of these countries, sadly, they don't have like a trash service. So there's water bottles and old dirty bottles everywhere. A lot of our staff are taking those bottles and filling them up and poking little holes into it and making like a drip irrigation system that costs nothing. So that's just one solution. And there's some stories like that in the donor newsletters um, that I think you have another handout that's a donor newsletter that has some information. And then I can also sc share a screen um, and show that later on. But it's um, there's some stories in one of our donor newsletters about those drip irrigation systems. All right, well, thank you, Joy. I just put that handout uh, available for you to download as well, if you'd like to, to click on that and, and download uh, Farm Stew newsletter. Uh, what is the lifespan of people in a sub-Sahara region where you work? So generally, the countries where we're working, we try to go places where at least one in three of the children are severely malnourished, and the lifespan hovers between 50 and 60 years old. So it's it's basically they're getting 50% less life than a North American Seventh-day Adventist. And imagine right. what they could do with 50% more life. <laughs> For sure. Uh, we have a question here. Uh, do, do you talk uh, at like gardening, giving gardening talks at any of the churches, I suppose, here in North America or around the world? Yeah, like the great thing is that with Zoom, I can be anywhere. Anybody wants me to be like that. So I love being able to share this message and especially sharing to churches. And so my email is just joy at farmstew.org. So it's J-O-Y at farmstew.org. And yeah, I, I love invitations to Zoom anywhere. And I physically go places too, although not as many places recently. Okay. Appreciate the questions coming in. We have another question from Robin. Are keyhole gardens used in areas that you work in? Do you recommend them for garden uh, 
construction and moisture retention. Yeah, keyhole gardens are awesome. And actually Jonah, the guy that was serving the, the tofu, he has put them in. They're maybe a little bit more complicated than some people either have time for or money like because of the bricks. And so they're not like our primary thing we teach. But I love the keyhole gardens that have the compost right in the middle of it because mm -hmm. then the, the minerals are just leaching right out to the roots. And it's a brilliant system. If you can do it, go for it or just Google it if you want to. Excellent. Uh, probably our last question here that we have time for. Um, the uh, questions referencing back to Eden Gardening documentary film, How to Grow a Vegetable Garden, that talks about how you, uh, how you can do it when you uh, don't have a lot of water. I haven't tried it, but it looks helpful. Wondering if farm students had success in using mulch or other coverings in the gardens. And you've sort of spoke to this already, but maybe yeah. you can share a little more. Yeah, I really like the Back to Eden video. It's very inspiring. The only problem is if you put um, that much mulch and it gets incorporated in, sometimes the microbiome of the soil is spending so much of its energy trying to break down the wood chips, especially that they use in that video, that it, you're losing nutrients that could go into your food. So you just want to be a little bit careful to keep the mulch on the top and not let it get integrated in to the soil. All right. Joy, it's been a, a pleasure having you uh, join us here this evening and for sharing um, not only just uh, something that I think I, I hope I know I've been inspired and I hope each of our um, audiences that has joined us tonight here has been inspired uh, not only by just the, the challenges you've given us about taking care of our own health, but how, you know, God is working through this health message around the world and how it can make a difference. And perhaps there are some tonight here that would like to know more about Farm Stew, how you could be involved and, and, uh, just, and just being part of the blessing that Farm Stew is around the world. Uh, Joy uh, has shared her email. Joy, maybe you could just put your email in the chat there. And, sure. Uh, anyone sure. who uh, Actually, would like to know more. Actually, put it in there? I, I, for some reason, the chat is not okay. showing up, but I was gonna just show people really quickly the uh, website, so I, I, Let's see if I'm showing it or not. Am I sharing? Okay, yeah, so I just wanted to share too, if people go to our website, they can actually go to that pop-up window and get the free wellness guide there as well. So if they're watching this on YouTube later and they can't download it, you can just go to the website and get it. So, and uh, right. yeah, and you can also email, there's a way to contact us at the bottom. And so that might be a way. I saw somebody wanting to start something in their own country and, um, really, I do encourage people to just go ahead and take the e-learning course and it will really help them be able to uh, learn and teach. And there's actually a mini course there that has a PowerPoint and a downloadable script so you can go and teach this in your own churches as well. So that's what we really encourage is people to share the recipe. We equip and inspire trainers in Africa and we also want to equip and inspire people here to share the recipe. I don't know if I lost Curtis. I muted myself and we lost Curtis, but I know he was trying to wrap us up, so. I just want to thank all of you for being here. And again, I will type my email in the chat if I can on my husband's computer because it was a little bit better than mine. So farmstew.org. And I think Curtis is coming back. I'm oh, sorry yay. about that. My uh, <laughs> battery died before I could get to my power supply. So. OK, great. All right, so I was kind of just wrapping this up and I did get the uh, farmstew.org, my email there in the chat. So I look forward okay. to hearing from well, people. Well, thank you again, Joy. Would you be willing to close with prayer here um, before? I'd thank be you. so happy to. So, Father God, I just thank you so much that you love us and especially that Jesus, that you came and lived so that we might live. And I just know that your heart, um, is so with us in our hard times and it's 
whether it's kind of the first world problems that we're experiencing or or the developing country problems that others are experiencing, Lord, you are with us and you care for each and every one of our concerns. And Father, I just thank you for bringing us together, ASI, as a, as a family and as a global church family to just learn from and inspire each other and to grow. And I just pray that you will help us all to implement the things that you have put on each and every person's heart who's been listening here tonight. And um, just to continue to mend our hearts and and to bond us together. And I just look forward to your soon coming, Jesus, when all of the challenges will be gone and we will just get to celebrate together all of the works that you have done that have um, given us the, the blessing of abundant life and the opportunity to share abundant life. We pray this in the holy and mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joy. And again, uh, I'd like to invite each one of you to join us again next week. Rodney Bowes will be sharing some very practical testimonies on uh, evangelism in your local church and in your community. And uh, he's got some very exciting testimonies to share. So thank you again, Joy. And thank you again, each one, for joining us this evening. And may God bless you uh, through the rest of this week. Good night. Amen. God bless. <laughs> Good night.